So I've just landed at the international airport in Penang, Malaysia, uh, through customs, through immigration, and this really nice lady on the plane is offering to give me a ride to my airport uh, with her and her friend. So I'm not going to say no. And uh, so yeah, pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to trying some of the best food in Southeast Asia. After getting an amazing free ride from two locals and checking into my Airbnb, I decided to take a little walk around my neighborhood and just check it out. After walking around for a little bit, I picked up a couple beers and went back to my place for an early night to bed. I only had a short time here in Georgetown, so I wanted to see and do as much as possible in the shortest amount of time. Woohoo! So I just woke up. I'm here in Georgetown, Penang, Malaysia. I have about 48 hours before I have to fly out of the country. So I gotta do as much as I can, as fast as I can. So I got up kind of early this morning. I'm going to attempt to rent a motorbike and then I'm gonna go explore this island as best I can in the short amount of time that I have. Let's go check it out. I'm currently en route to try to rent a motorbike. Um, I left in kind of a rush and forgot my international motorcycle license. And so the first shop denied me, but he told me to go down the street where they're less reputable and they'll rent me one without my international license physically with me. Let's see how that works out. Well, so it only took three attempts to <laughs> uh, get in a illegal motorbike rental for the day. Uh, the third lady was like, you have license? I was like, yeah, but I left it in Thailand. She's like, okay, if you get caught by police, you settle with police. She said, if I get caught by the police, that I could be charged and she could be charged. So she wanted to ensure that I would settle with the police, settle with the police uh, on my own and not get her in any trouble. I was like, sure, how much is that gonna be? She's like, maybe a hundred ringgit, just like 25 US bucks. So if that's what it costs me to drive around for the day, oh well. The motorbike rental itself was 35 ringgit for the day, so uh, divide that by eight, and that's how much it is in US dollars. Oh, no, 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 no. Divide that by four. Huh. How much is a ringgit? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, pretty cheap, that's all I remember. Less than $10, let's put it that way. After working out all the details of my not-so-legal motorcycle, I decided to go explore the beautiful coastline and check out some of the unique colonial heritage sites that make up Georgetown, including the now very famous Cornwallis Fort. So we're inside Fort Cornwallis right now, which is, I guess, built on the water, defending the harbor from invasion or attack. I have a pamphlet in my hand. I haven't read anything about it, so I cannot tell you other than um, they have cannons. It's on the water, and it was uh, 20 ringgit or five US dollars to come in. That's all I got so far. Well, this is pretty cool. In this fort, there are many cannons. In 1808, there were 17 cannons laid in the fort. The English authority had taken these cannons from pirates who invaded. Yes. So a little history lesson here about the fort. Uh, the fort was established by Francis Light in 1786. Um, he was here as a kind of a spearhead for the East India Trading Company. The fort was set up to be, um, you know, the trading center and you know protect their their trading interest. But uh, it was the East India Company coming to take possession of the Penang Island uh, from the natives, of course. <laughs> So this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, it's been under preservation laws since like the 1800s. 
um, and it's actually considered the most well-preserved uh, fort in all of uh, Malaysia. So, pretty cool. A little history. All right. After the lady rented me the motorbike and told me, you know, warned me that if I get in trouble with the police, I gotta pay the fine and don't drag her into it. I really thought nothing about it. Got on my motorbike, started driving around, and I've seen nothing but police <laughs> since I've gotten on the motorbike. Uh, it turns out that Georgetown is a UNESCO World Heritage site, so like the whole town. And so there are motorbike and bicycle and walking police, and they're just everywhere. <laughs> and so it's like, ooh. You know, I have a license, but I don't have it on me. I don't want to have to like bribe the police, but I will. Um, so yeah, let's, let's be safe today, all right? Gnarly old tree here, but what makes it even creepier is the crows that are hanging out on it. So I've wandered into the ancient cemetery, uh, dates back to the colonial times. I found the cemetery to be incredibly beautiful, although a bit creepy at times. But it was really cool seeing graves dating back to the 1500s. Interestingly though, the cemetery is partitioned up into different sections depending on your nationality or heritage. So there was a section for the Dutch, for the Portuguese, for the Chinese. Each individual country had a separate plot within the graveyard to lay their dead to rest. The coolest grave I found was the grave of Francis Light, the East India Trading Company captain that founded the fort and basically started the colonization of the island, the beautiful colonial city that we see today. After the cemetery and now having a reliable transportation of my own, I wanted to get out of town and see some more of the beautiful coastline and country of Panam. But my last stop on the way out of town was the floating mosque. After leaving the mosque, I headed further down the coast, passing through some cute little coastal villages, stopping at some beautiful beaches, and grabbing a quick bite to eat on my way to the Penang Butterfly Sanctuary, where I hoped to capture some beautiful images of a diverse butterfly population of Southeast Asia. Okay, that is definitely the biggest snapping turtle I've ever seen. 
Look at that compared to the people. Once in the butterfly sanctuary, I learned just how hard it is to shoot these elusive little creatures. They were really fun to watch, but really hard to take pictures of. So I'm currently standing outside the Northam Beach Cafe, which is a giant uh, outdoor venue for street vendors or kind of pop-up shops uh, right here on the water. Very local place. However, I was told to come here for lunch and nothing is open. So now I just want a cold beer. I don't think I can get that. But it is a beautiful view. So I was able to find someone that had cold beer. So I guess mission successful? Mm. Mission successful. From here, I headed back into town, stumbled across a beautiful Hindu temple, got some amazing Penang street food, and headed back to my room for an early night as I was exhausted from a full day of riding around and exploring. special right now but the price of their website said 80 ringgit but when I got here round trip was only 30 ringgit and that's a difference of like saying it's six dollars versus you know eighteen dollars so I'm pretty happy with that hill just as a giant misty rain cloud rolled in so we may have to stay here for a while before we can get any views because right now you can't see anything but clouds
Yes, I love chocolate and coffee. Well, I just enjoyed some delicious katia Malaysian fried noodles, which is uh, honestly very, very similar to pad thai, just minus the sugar and peanuts. But uh, I'm heading to the Penang uh, History Museum, which is probably gonna be my last thing I do on my uh, 48 hours here because I am almost out of time. My time in Penang may have been short, but I know I'll come back to this beautiful colonial and tropical island to see some more of the beautiful beach and countryside, hopefully get a chance to explore some of the mountains and parks, and eat some more famous and delicious Penang food. Thanks again, Penang. See you next time. <laughs>